coming up on this episode of Will Wilde's Outdoor Adventures. Our trip starts out yet again with a sighting of three more bighorn sheep. Bighorn males, called rams, are famous for their large curled horns. These impressive growths are a symbol of status and a weapon used in epic battles across the mountains. Fighting for dominance or mating rights, males face each other, rear up in their hind legs, and hurl themselves at each other in charges of up to 20 miles an hour. The resounding clash of horns can be heard echoing through the mountains as the confrontation is repeated sometimes for many hours, until the ram submits and walks away. The animal's thick, bony skull usually prevents serious injury. A bighorn ram's horns can weigh up to 30 pounds, more than all of the bones in his body combined. Female ewes also have horns, but they are of smaller size. Bighorns inhabit a vast range, from the Rocky Mountains in Canada down to the deserts of the American Southwest. They are relatives of goats and have a balance-aiding split hooves and rough hoof bottoms for natural grip. These attributes, along with the keen vision, help them move easily about rocky, rugged mountain terrain. Wild sheep live in local groups, but rams and ewes typically meet only to mate. Rams live in a bachelor groups, and females live in herds with other females and young rams. When fall mating arrives, rams gather in larger groups, and ram fighting escalates. Usually only stronger, older rams with bigger horns are able to mate. In winter, bighorn herds move to lower elevations and mountain pastures. In all seasons, these animals eat available grass, seeds, and plants. They regurgitate their food as they chew it as cud for final digestion. Lambs are born each spring on high, secluded ledges protected from bighorn predators such as wolves, coyotes, and mountain lions. Though not the golden eagles which target lambs, young can walk soon after birth, and at one week old a lamb and its mother join others in the herd. Lambs are playful and independent, though their mothers nurse them occasionally for four to six months. I decided to take my first break. With the extra seven pounds of water that I was carrying and some extra battery weight, it doesn't sound like much, but I was honestly starting to feel it and already starting to sweat through my clothes. It's important that when you do winter backpacking, you don't push yourself to the extreme. If you start feeling sweat, take a break, try to dry out a little. also gives you a nice moment to enjoy the nature around you and the scenery. Sometimes I get so caught up in filming that I forget to just stop and take a look at all the beautiful things around me. The tracks here you see me following are from snowshoes. You can tell by the patterns and how they kind of carve out a wall. I've been asked by a couple of my friends why I'm not using snowshoes on these trips. And I had learned from watching various different YouTubers that most people seem to use these when they don't need them. Unless you have at least half a foot to a foot of snow on the ground, you're actually probably causing yourself more work by bringing the snowshoes due to their added weight. One of the more popular YouTubers, Nut and Fancy, was who I heard say this first. You're just putting more effort into moving with snowshoes. So, unless you really need to tromp in some really deep snow, it's probably worth it just to do a little tiny bit of post-holing. 
Again, picking up your leg is easier than picking up extra weight on your leg. Along the trail I found some sumac that was left over from this summer and spring. If you ever see any of this stuff, give it a smell, it has an awesome fragrance. It's also something we're going to use tonight in some tea. The antioxidant value of sumac spice is phenomenal. When herbs and spices are rated for antioxidant levels, sumac sits atop the list, even above commonly used spices like cinnamon and oregano. It even beats to alki berry, which is trending now as a health elixir, as well as many fruits and vegetables. Eating foods high in antioxidants can help prevent heart disease and breast cancer and treat osteoarthritis. Sumac spice can help lower blood sugar levels. Research studies on sumac demonstrate its effectiveness in controlling or preventing many of the chronic diseases that often accompany aging. One study found that consuming sumac helped type 2 diabetics. These other berries shown here in the bag are nightshade and are not to be consumed ever. These are poisonous and will kill you. Sumac is also high in vitamin C. Because of its high vitamin C content, sumac juice was used by Native Americans to fight the common cold, fever, and scurvy. I'm having to stop a few more times than normal. Lichen are small organisms commonly found throughout the forests of North America. They're neither plant nor animal, but rather organisms unlike any other on Earth. While most people think of lichen as a type of moss, they are actually a combination of algae and fungus. The fungus provides a structure for the algae to live in while the algae provides food for the fungus. Now it was time to get started working on the shelter. The previous snowfall had buried some of my logs. I call them logs, but they're tiny down trees I had found from the local area. Nothing had been cut down.
At this point, I really needed a break again. I laid down my tarp and just laid on the ground for about five to 10 minutes. I was completely exhausted from the hike up here. The view was amazing though, and I soaked it in. After a while, I mustered up the courage to stand up and get back to work. After my break, I started collecting firewood, focusing mainly on the dead branches of already standing trees. Now that gathering most of the firewood was out of the way, I could spend some more time on the shelter. I started by placing the poles all the way around the tripod, but making sure to leave a gap between two. That way we would have room for the entrance and a door. This will be the entrance here. Somewhere about here there will go a small, small fire. This is all I was able to get done with the time that I had left in the day. It at least is starting to look like something now and more than just a pile of sticks. Well, I'll be honest, it still looks like a pile of sticks.
I still hadn't put up my tent yet, and I stomped on the ground to get the snow a little bit more compact. The temperature had dropped to around 22 degrees now, and it was time to get the fire started. I pulled out a cattail and began spreading it out. Just in case, I've got all kinds of fire starters. I really like the cotton balls and Vaseline. And since these are so cheap to make, I don't want to mess around. We'll pull one out. Just for extra kick. A myth from the Alabama tribe. In the beginning of the world, it was Bear who owned fire. It warmed Bear and his people on cold nights and gave them light when it was dark. Bear and his people carried fire with them everywhere they went. One day, Bear and his people came to a great forest where they found many acorns lying on the forest floor. Bear set fire at the edge of the forest and he and his people began eating acorns. The acorns were crunch and crisp and tasted better than any acorns Bear and his people had ever eaten. They wandered further and further away from the fire, eating the delicious acorns and seeking out more when the acorn supply grew low. Fire blazed up merrily for a while until it had burned nearly all of its wood. It started to smoke and flicker and then it dwindled down and down. Fire was alarmed. It was nearly out. Feed me. Feed me. Fire shouted to Bear. But Bear and his people had wandered deep into the forest and did not hear Fire's cries. At that moment, Man came walking through the forest and saw the small flickering fire. Feed me! Feed me! Fire cried in despair. What should I feed you? Man asked. He had never seen Fire before. I eat sticks and logs and wood of all kinds, Fire explained. Man picked up a stick and leaned it into the north side of the fire. Fire sent its orange-blue flames flickering up the side of the stick until it burned down. Man got a second stick and laid it on the west side of the fire. Fire, nourished by this stick, burned brighter and stretched taller and eagerly claimed the second stick. Man picked up a third stick and laid it on the south side of the fire and laid a fourth stick to the east. By this time, fire was leaping and dancing in delight its hunger satisfied. Man warmed himself by the blazing fire, enjoying the changed colors and the hissing and snapping sounds fire made as it ate the wood. Man and fire were very happy together, and man fed fire sticks whenever it got hungry. But long time later, Bear and his people came back to the edge of the forest, looking for fire. Fire was angry when it saw Bear. It blazed until it was white hot and so bright that Bear had to shade his eyes with both paws. I do not even know you! Fire shouted at Bear. The terrible heat rolling off fire drove Bear and his people away, so they could not take it away and carry it away with them. And now fire belongs to man.
<laughs> Tastes like a delicious New York. Make sure to get it none of my clothes. I got soap and hand sanitizers. Look at that. My goodness. Oh, perfect. I don't know if you can see it. You see that? No, you can see that. No, we can't see it, you moron. The shot's out of focus. It's dripping all over right here, though. Makes me a little paranoid. I'm gonna take that snow and set it next to the fire. Hopefully, I can maybe burn it. It's perfect. Look at that. Look at that goodness. That was worth it. If I get eaten in my tent tonight, it was worth it. Delicious. I wanted to do it over a spit, but I got lazy. All right, I'm going to clean this snow up, get some hand sanitizer and uh, try to eliminate all these smells. Oh, it's getting cold. It's gonna be a cold night. I know it's gonna be in the teens tonight, about 18. Let's check the temperature. Down to 22, and it's seen a low of 21 so far. So, yeah, I expect 18 or or worse. Or worse. Got a little bit of sugar here and some black tea. It's called Constant Comet. It's something my mom really liked and it's a black tea that's got orange rinds in it. It's got a pretty unique flavor. I highly recommend you try it. 
So I've got my drinking water sitting next to the fire as well. And it's gonna get, like I said, in the, the, the teens, so I definitely wanna take any precaution I can to not have that freeze. I don't like putting it in my sleeping bag though. I, I don't have enough room in there as is, so putting stuff in there just kinda is not my, my bag. Got a lot of work done on the shelter today and I'm pretty happy about that. As you can see on the video, it's starting to come together and really look like a, a teepee. And I think that's pretty cool. Tomorrow, I gotta get a few more down logs and then a whole bunch of like large branches and some shrubbery. There's a lot of moss and stuff around here that will work really great to pile on it. So I actually think we're gonna be able to finish it tomorrow. And that was why we came up here for two days. Tried to do it last time, but ended up getting sick. And I wish you guys could see the stars right now. It's quite spectacular. I will say it's good. It was getting a little tiresome coming to the same spot to do a little little bit of work on the shelter each time. So I really wanted to get this finished and have a place that we can come up here and you know do some cool stuff do some overnights even use it as a the first stop and if I was to do like two days just backpacking not focused on bushcraft and stop here first and then stop somewhere else on the second night and just come up here to chill and relax and do bushcrafty type things and really, really just a, a kind of a challenge for me What's been the hardest part is having to look for stuff that's already on the ground, the, the debris. And that took a lot more time than I expected. Let's see how this tea's doing. Let's give it a shot, see if it's any good. Oh, it's already chilling off. If you don't use the koozie, man, it gets cold quick. Yeah, it's good. Nice little hybrid of the Constant Comet and the Sumac. I definitely like the sumac. I, I picked a lot of that to dry out. A lot of rose hips too, but unfortunately the rose hips, I stored them the wrong way and they kind of went bad. Just set that by the fire so it doesn't chill totally. It is cold. I have all five layers on right now and I've got my, my, my under armor. I've got a synthetic over that. I've got a Columbia fleece vest, I have the North Face puffer jacket, and then I have my outer layer on right now as well, and I'm even wearing my gloves. It's down to 23 degrees right now, so the overnight low is going to suck. Um, normally, I end up getting warm enough that I take off my jacket and then I put it on later in the night. Nope, tonight I'm just gonna be going to bed and full gear everything i'm going to put on my leggings as well which i normally don't do i might even put on two actually yeah i'm going to put on two layers of socks so two fresh layers um yeah it's cold it's cold the last of the fire tonight it's down to 22 put my leggings on 
and I'm gonna get in bed in about uh, 20 minutes here and put two layers of socks on and wish for the best. I had heard that if you bury your water bottle in the snow, upside down, that you can prevent it from freezing. So I thought we would try just a minimal amount of snow and see what happens the next day. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider becoming a patron. You can find that down in the description below. Also, if you want to chat with me or other members from the channel, please check out my Discord, also found in the description and comments below. And last but not least, if you want to see any of the gear that I'm carrying, you can find links to that on my Amazon Influencer page, also linked in the description below. Well, kind of bothers me to say this, but for the second time, we're heading back a day early. I meant to come out here for two days, and the snow coming up just exhausted me. By the time I got here yesterday, my glutes were absolutely burning. Um, just physically getting up here. Again, it's six miles getting up here. I'm, as you can see, when I start out, I'm at the base. You can see by the views, I'm climbing up. This isn't I'm parking my car and doing some bushcraft and taking my backpack and walking in like I just came in from a trip. I'm literally backpacking and that's why this is going 
so slow, so slow. Um, so I was completely physically spent, physically spent. I woke up this today with a headache. Uh, the lows got down to 17 last night. And for my gear, that's it. That's the line for me. Like, I'm sure I could live down to about five degrees, but I'd be like, <laughs> so about 20 degrees is where I, I don't want to go under 20 anymore. I just don't. It's just not any fun. Um, if I had the right gear, sure. But then there's other things that suck about this. Waking up in the morning and getting out of your tent, I hate it so much in the winter. I hate it so much. And then when you have to get the fire going or if you're breaking down camp, your hands, like I've got pocket warmers in here, but they don't do much. When it's like, when it's this cold, it, it takes a minute. You got to hold them for a few minutes before your hands warm back up. And uh, it's just really brutal. Look. My my least favorite thing about backpacking is setting up and breaking down camp. I hate it so much. I just don't like doing it. And today I just woke up. I immediately got a fire going, made some tea, and started going back and forth between the fire. Be careful when you have a fire around snow as well. When you start stepping on the snow, it'll compact and turn into ice. And I ended up slipping and falling right on my butt. And But anyways, aside from all that, I feel like Bantha Poodoo right now. I just don't feel good and that's partially because yesterday the hike up here like I said was exhaustive I got right to work pulling the down trees over and setting them up and getting firewood all that kind of stuff doing some sawing so I could have some good uh, nice base logs all that just it just took it out of me and if I knew the temperature was gonna be maybe super warm tomorrow which it's not I might consider staying, but again, on top of that, I'm just physically exhausted. I'm just tired. I want to go lay down and go take a nap. Um, I did not sleep much. I probably slept a couple hours, and I was down for probably about 10. Um, the Tylenol PM, they don't do anything, so everybody is worried about me taking sleeping pills. Again, I can't stress this enough. I, I wake up all night with them anyways. It's, it's awful. I'm uncomfortable. One of the things that made me so uncomfortable this time is I had no move, uh, room to move around. I had all of my clothes on, all of them, even this, this jacket, which I normally don't sleep in. And I still got a little a little chilly. I wouldn't say I was like, Ugh, but I was like, you know, it could be, yeah, it could be warmer in here. I'd like that. That'd be nice. That'd be a thing that I would accept. Um, another thing that you guys, I can't stress this enough. If you're going to go winter backpacking and you already have your normal backpacking gear, be prepared for it to get beat up. When you take this stuff backpacking, when I take this coat, this this um, yellow puffer jacket with me, it, it goes on if I get cold at night, you know, I don't have to sit super close to the fire. But fire is essential when you're out here, in my opinion, in the winter. Um, yes, you can do it if you have, without fire, if you have the right gear, great, fantastic, expensive gear. Yeah, you could definitely do it, but... In my opinion, if 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 you're going winter backpacking, you gotta have some fire. Those embers are gonna jump on your clothes. I have I got I got a friend of the channel, Gnarled Cooley. Hey David, what's up, buddy? Um, and he's going winter backpacking for his first time as well. And or not not first time in the winter. Well, it might be the first time. I can't remember. Anyways, he's he just got this nice new jacket, and I'm like, dude, if you're gonna take that in the winter, you're gonna put a hole in it. I put one to two to three holes in my clothes every time I go out. I got a hole here. I got a hole here. I got three new ones on this left arm. I luckily only have one in this outer layer, which kind of really ticks me off. They're all over the place. They're in my gaiters. So I see why some of the bushcraft guys have more rugged gear. Mind you, they're also going out and building things, and, and you know they're around the fire. You want stuff that isn't going to burn if you can get it uh, but anyways like I said just be prepared that if you're out in the winter you're you're gonna ruin some gear real quick and you're gonna get that hole in that nice new down jacket like lickety split so I've just about done packing up I've got some coffee chews I've been sucking on right now and I want to thank everybody for watching want to thank Rick Chisholm awesome patron and want to thank just uh, everybody even my mom and dad want to thank them for supporting all this stuff and uh, and then pushing me to uh, do more and 
and that's that's what's good right that's what's good yeah i don't know what to say right now i'm just i want to go home i want to go home i want to make some hot chocolate i want to play some star wars video games and not think about anything i'm just i'm really tired i'm exhausted i've got some gummy bears in my pocket i'm going to be munching on the on the way down the hill and uh, we'll go get the game cam. Hopefully, we saw some cool game cam stuff as well. I definitely heard coyotes last night. Physically heard them. And they didn't sound far away either. They sounded you know, within the little vicinity. Not howling or anything, but just like a weird yipe, yipe, yipe. Just like we played at the end of the last video. So, anyways, guys. If you are enjoying this, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you're liking. And um, on the next trip, hopefully, the shelter starts coming together. It's I, I still see possibly two more trips before it actually looks like a shelter. And then the end goal with that is, well, I, I just totally burned the hair on my arms right here. Uh, the end goal is to actually do an overnight in it. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. If I see anything cool down the hill, I'll, I'll film that as well. And uh, we'll show you what's on the game cam as well. Bye, guys.